Welcome back to McNulty's Book Corral, where I'm going to have a, a nice warm drink, and uh, it's really cold outside. We have a blizzard outside here in northern Illinois, and we're going to talk about popes. Hang on a second. I've got to get this uh, going. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that'll, that'll do it. All right. <clears throat> this is the second episode about the box of pulps that I pulled out of storage, and we're going to do this really quickly. This is going to be fun because we're going to talk about, I'm just going to talk about really one of these. It's a small stack of imagination, stories of science and fantasy from the 1950s. And I want to talk about this first one here, which is um, from March of 52. This features a story by uh, Dwight V. Swain, who was born in 1915, and he died in 1992. Dwight Swain was one of the regular contributors to the pulp market in the Golden Age, and his stories are always interesting to me. Uh, so what I'm going to do today is I'm just going to read you the opening from the cover. The cover here is by Malcolm Smith, I believe, and the other covers, many of the who did many covers and illustrations for this, as well as... Um, Lloyd Rognan. But this is Malcolm Smith, and I'm going to read you the opening because it's so good. It's really good. And this is, and then I'm going to explain why we read this stuff. So, uh, Malcolm Smith also did the, uh, the interior illustration here for the opening of this story, which I'm going to read. Listen to this and tell me if this is something that uh, captures your attention. It's, called, it's a classic hook. Naked. Still as death, the veiled woman goddess men called Zamar rested on a gold-draped dais within the great glowing crystal globe. Zamar, queen of storms, ruler of rain and wind and lightning, empress of the surging forces that spread their tumult across the sky, sainted monster, evil savior, old as time and young as folly, born of woman, damned of men, wise with dark wisdom gone astray. Zamar, passionate goddess, a word, a myth, a fading picture in forgotten books, a phantom rising out of these ghostly gutted cities, these ruins dead a thousand years. Yet here she lay in this deep sunk vault, nude, save for the short jeweled veil that masked the top half of her face. Her body still gleamed like a supple ivory statue, a vision of sleek, ripe, curved perfection. Rippling waves of jet black hair framed the pale, veiled oval of her face in a darkly radiant nimbus. A faint rose glow touched lips and breasts. It seemed almost as if she could have been sleeping here mere hours only, instead of eons, as if she were still alive and vibrant. All woman, all terrible, voluptuous promise. And so we have the opening lines of Dark Destiny by Dwight V. Swain from Imagination Science Fiction in March of 1952. Really fun stuff. Um, so... As I'm talking, I'm going to give you. I'll show you a couple of more. You know, I have this small stack. I'll let the. I'll have the uh, the covers pop up. Um, I also found stuck in with this little group in that box, a copy of Fantastic Science Fiction, which is a, a different title. This is the only one of these I have, and this is really a cornball issue. It has a story in here called "The Mummy Takes a Wife" by Clyde Mitchell, and it was about as silly a story as you could find. Um, I don't know if this magazine lasted very long. Uh, what was the year of this one? And let's see if I can even see it here. It's got to be on here. So this was December of 56, so the Golden Age is in full swing. So anyways, uh, but today we're talking about imagination science fiction with these fantastic covers. And, you know, the stories that we find in here are written by guys like John Jakes. In this stack alone, we have John Jakes, we have Milton Lesner, uh, we have Robert Silverberg having a, quite a few in here. Edmund Hamilton, remember he did some really cool stories for DC Comics back in the day. Um, Ivor Jorgensen, I spoke about Ivor Jorgensen in the last episode. He is another one of those who's everywhere. There's a story in one of these by, I don't remember which one, but there's a story in one of these by Charles Beaumont. 
I don't think I've covered Charles Beaumont yet. What a great writer he was. Uh, and Henry Slessar, who was a great writer of uh, short thrillers, you know, and mysteries. Um, you'll find a lot of Henry Slessar tales in those anthologies that Robert Arthur put together for Alfred Hitchcock in the 60s, um, if you remember those stories that scared even me and so forth and so on. Um, so we have we have in all of these these great little these pulps, this is like a digest size, um, we have really really fun stories. They're entertaining, they're imaginative. So the reason we read the pulps is the same reason that we read fairy tales, it's the same reason we read you know um, murder mysteries and whatever. We read these um, because these are imaginative adventures and they broaden our horizons. Um, they if you're a younger reader and you're reading this type of thing, you know they're teaching moral values almost exclusively in the the pulps of the 1940s and 50s. They're teaching a moral value um, that would change a little bit later, but um, you know, reading reading is an act that uh, engages us emotionally. So you get wrapped up in the in the characters. What's happening to the to these people here? Um, here's a really nice cover too. I think this is I think this is by. Lloyd Rognar uh, on this one. Um, so, you know, I mean, you know, we get involved in it, and reading the pulps, if you're a younger reader, I mean, this encouraged critical thinking and, and all of this stuff, and your imagination gets fired up. Uh, so they're fun to read, and that's the purpose of, of pointing this out. Um, it's, you know, a little stack like this, it's not the best stack of pulp magazines that I've ever ever read but the uh, the stories are really good here um, and they're exciting to look at you know and you know and so the cover the cover artwork is a hook just like the piece that I read um, by Dwight Swain which is a hook that's a classic hook it gets you hooked right into the story you want to know what's going on what's that all about and you're reading it, and a, a lesson can be learned here for some modern publishers uh, who uh, would like to attract an audience. Uh, you might want to learn what that is all about. <laughs> Not to be critical about the modern publishers, but some of them really don't get it. Uh, and I'm not sure if all of the modern readers do too. But really fun stuff, really great Dark Destiny. Now I don't know if there's a, I don't know if there's a collection of Dwight Swain stories are not out there there should be because he was so good you know I really enjoyed him whenever I see him Ivor Jorgensen and so forth uh, and John Jason and of course Robert Silverberg is all over these pulps in the 1950s uh, I mean this is this is great stuff it's really fun to read so entertainment value is really the focus here for these pulps on this little section of the box and in a couple of days I will pull out the last little group that's in there and we'll talk about those and uh, we'll be done with this box and then we'll move on to something else uh, maybe we'll come back to unboxing other stuff I have in storage later on if you enjoyed this let me know and we'll take it from there in the meantime I want you to stay well I want you to stay happy I want you to drink something wicked and warm and read a book <laughs>